I guess we have a quorum, so that's good. Okay. Um, welcome to the if city. You're ready. Wait. You ready? Sit. Welcome to the City of Laconia Conservation Commission, June 5th, 2019. I'm Dean Anson. Deb Williams. Marnie Schultz. Michael Foote. Dick Christopher. Peter Feather. Rob Mora. Thank you. Okay, so we have a quorum, and um, Dean? Dean? What? Okay. All right. Let's pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, so the first item on the agenda is acceptance of the May 29th minutes. Dick already passed in his comments. that we accept the minutes with the corrections. I'll second that. Okay, anybody have any comments? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Good, thank you. Okay, the Pickerel Pond easement. I did not walk the easement. Did anybody else? I have not been out. Okay, so let's let's keep that on the agenda so that we remember to do it. In particular, we want to look for um, any structures that need to be removed because of their condition, and if there's any debris or. Are the boundary lines sufficiently determined so that as people access the site, they don't go onto the neighbor's property? I don't believe they're marked. I think we ought to put a, a series of them, you know, on the boundaries. If you um, decide to go out there, could you send out an email and let us know? So if any of us are free, we could join you. Okay. Because I know you and Wes were going to do it before. Right. And Wes is out of town tonight, so he's, he's not going to be here for the meeting. Right. But I'm saying if, right. you, if the two of you decide you're going to do it, you know. Next Tuesday or whatever, just let us know. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Okay. Deb, you went to um, Lakes Congress. I did. I got some good information. So I attended the Lake. We had three different uh, workshops we could go to. One was Lake Smart that I went to, which I can talk about in a minute. Uh, another was Tools and Technology for aquatic invasive species prevention they had some they had a really cool uh, wash station it's a portable wash station from um, Minnesota um, and they had one on site and along with the salesperson from Minnesota um, and I guess New Hampshire lakes has I want to I don't know if they have bought it or rented it for the summer but there's there's a uh, one style that you can trailer around and they are going to be trailering it around the state to the different ramps Just for the exposure just so that people can see it and it um, It almost looks like a car wash station. There's no there's no water with it, but there's like a vacuum a wet back hose um, There are tools that you can reach under your um, boat or under your trailer and get any kind of weeds or anything off of after you come out of the water. Um, and I believe there's information there about um, invasives also. Um, some, some of them, the real high-end models have the pressure wash also, um, but they have different models and they were pretty interesting. A lot of them, um, you can get them to run on solar power. They have panels 
because a lot of these ramps are out in the boonies and you know don't have access to it. He said, I guess I won't look at that on camera. Who gets um, to use these things? It's the boaters. It's, it's, it's the boaters. Themselves. Yeah, it's a do-it-yourself kind of thing. There's instructions right on it. Uh, it even had, it comes with lights, so if you're get coming out and it's dark, it's got these great lights on it that you can turn on. Um, the electric or utility use for it is minimal, I guess. You know, it's something that whoever has it in municipality or um, group, lake group, has to figure that in. I can't remember what he said the average price was. But you also have, like with the wet vac, um, you would have it come and cleaned out by, say, a septic service the every so often. It would, is it collected somehow? Does it collect it to a tank? Yep, yep. It collects it to a tank. So it runs on 110 volts AC, is that it? Or solar. You can get it solar, solar power. Oh, well, solar might be, I don't know. But say it's on 110 volts AC, there's got to be an extension cord they, from something somewhere. Right. Well, typically they have it built on a platform, like a cement pad. Oh, it's so not portable. Oh, okay. Well, some of them are, some of them aren't. It just, you know, the portable ones, I think, are some kind of um, either an extension cord I mean, some or, of these or places a generator. Portable, so there's no power anywhere. So. Right. Right. That's why they've had good luck with the solar ones. Interesting. So, and, it's, and he said it's very interesting. He said if... Um, Chances are, if there are several boaters coming out of the water at once, and one of them uses it, then they will all line up to use it. It's kind of like peer pressure. Mm -hmm. um, Plus, they want their boat to look nice anyway. It's good well, to and it's true. Off from it. It, it, that's very true. Um, so, how long it, would it take to do a say a 20, 22 foot? Boat he he said the average time, and the the cool thing about these is, is they're all like tech integrated. Mm -hmm. So if if whoever is in charge of the machine um, has the app on their phone, if um, one of the tools, say, hasn't been used in a week, it'll say, check this tool. You know, so maybe something's wrong with it. Maybe somebody cut it and stole it. I mean, what, they're all, they are all tethered so that they can't be stolen. Um, but it would, all, it would also send a message to the septic person and say, this tank needs to be emptied, you know, this week or whatever. It's kind of cool. But they, um, I think... I think it was the average time that it was used was five minutes. What's the cost on this? Oh, of the units? Yeah. I think they start at like 12000 and go up. So and what size boats can they do? Um, any size, really. Okay. I know when I was coming, or coming, going, when I was driving to Florida, um, uh, Virginia is very strict about uh, boats having to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anytime you're going by a, a boat ramp or something like that, no signs. Yeah. So, and I guess Minnesota, there's a, a lot of ordinances there because they have a lot of invasive Lakes. species. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, well, that was, so that was interesting. And it was nice that they had it right there that we could all take a look at it. And at some point this summer, I'm sure they'll stop by our ramps. I'll have to try and get the schedule so that we could go all, all go out and look at it. Yeah. Cool. Um, and the other workshop I went to was climate change about um, water levels and how it's affecting the loons. Um, so the first part of it was a very college-level <laughs> college level course on um, the different, uh, different levels of gases that have been released in the past hundred years and all this kind of stuff. So. She was very knowledgeable, but it was really. You don't mean that whole industrial revolution thing. <laughs> it was just, it was about how the You know, backed up by ice cores and stuff like that. You're not actually talking science, are you? It was real science. It was very good. scientific. But, and then, um, is it Henry or Harry Morrell that does the loons? Oh, it's, um, it's Harry Vogel. Vogel. Vogel, anyway. German, so word, he, German he, word for bird. Oh, thank you. Vogel. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> anyway, so he came on and then talked about the loons. Um, so, and they, they've, they've done okay so far. 
I guess this year the loons have had, because the water level is so high, and any of their nesting sites would be in the water. So they've had to build their nest up this year. Interesting. But then I know there's two eggs. I sometimes watch the loon cam. Such an exciting life. <laughs> but um, they have two loon eggs um, at the wherever they, their camera is. I think it's on Winnipesaukee somewhere, mm -hmm. probably near Moultonboro. Well, I know they're out on the island. Good. So well, they're out on Win uh, Winnesquam. They've been there for a while. Yeah, they have been. Yeah. They fly over my house every morning and afternoon, evening. Which you feed them on the way? Huh? You feed them on the way? Yeah. So You so keep sardines you around, eh? <laughs> so would you talk about Lake Smart, please? So I thought that was really interesting. Did you go to that? No, I went to the... Lisa and I both went. That's right. So the Lake Smart program um, has been developed from New Hampshire Lakes by some new grants that they had gotten. And it's along the lines that what we had talked about in this group as being available to homeowners if they had a runoff problem or some kind of uh, landscaping at the water's edge so that we could come and advise them how to improve on their property. Um, and this is the same kind of thing. It's the same kind of program. They're going to have, um, it's an actual certificate that the homeowner can um, get if their, if their home is, let's see, they have four criteria. So you have to have driveway and parking, structures and septic, yard recreation and footpaths, shoreline and water access. So they have an online, and it's a self-assessment that you take first to see where your home is, what kind of shape it is according to being lake smart. And as they, would, they explained it too, anybody's property is going to end up in the lake because we're all in the watershed, so everything is going to run downhill. So anybody can improve their property no matter where you are. Um, but they are going to pick um, 10 communities this year. Um, and invite them down to New Hampshire Lakes, their offices in Concord, and have, I think, a one-day, they want teams of three, and there'll be a one-day training, and then they want, they would want us to identify three properties and to commit to working with those homeowners mm. for this summer. Um, so that, and then they, if they make the criteria, they get like a placard that they can put in their yard and especially like if you're on the lake, so you could put it on the lakeside, so people, then your neighbors will see it. They want it to spread, you know, word of mouth and all, so that they don't want to be inundated this first year while they're still getting um, the program up and running and training people, because the more people they train, the more homeowners <coughs> they can assess too. So um, I did put our name in, whether we are selected, I don't know, but they were excited to hear that we have been thinking about the same kind of thing for a while. So maybe that'll cool. help. Yeah. And I think Winnesquam Watershed Group also may have put their name in. Probably. Because they were at the presentation <coughs> also. Lisa, I Probably. think, was there. Yeah. So. But, but that, it, my, the, the, um, the introduction um, to the conference the man who was doing the presentation, this is not just limited to um, lakefront residences. This is anybody. I mean, I was looking at my house and how I could make changes that would essentially take stormwater and put it into the ground, not have it run off your property, but stay on your property, run into the ground so it could be filtered. And so it's like putting drip edges, um, along along my um, garage so that it doesn't go onto the asphalt. Instead, it goes into the drip edge and goes down into the ground. And they're also, they, you know, they're, they don't want to reinvent the wheel. So, you know, they have the soak program, soak up the rain. Mm -hmm. They are going to use their resources to help homeowners also. So, you know, it could be a, col a real collaboration of groups, whether it's our group and Soak Up the Rain and, you know, whoever else might have information, New Hampshire Co-op, 
thing. So that's another area that the master gardeners are very um, interested in is, is water retention and uh, diversion and right. So we could use you guys too. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. If not this summer, maybe next summer we'll be able to do it. Um, but we're, you know, we're the city on the lakes. We have oh, yeah. a lot of a lot of skin in the game. <laughs> Indeed. <clears throat> okay. I went to cyanobacteria, um, and I think we should um, talk to Rich Tilton about having the people that are doing milfoil looking for cyanobacteria. It's, um, you know, it's relatively easy to see because it's, it's a bacteria that is in the water and discolors the water in many cases, but in some cases they're just balls that are in the sand and um, they can be dangerous to the health of animals, pets, like dogs. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think the state is now, they have a woman who is in charge of the cyanobacteria and if we collect samples to see if it is cyanobacteria, or just pollen on the on the water surface, and send it to her. She will give us an analysis and tell us um, if it's um, if it's a type <clears throat> a type of cyanobacteria that's of concern to the health of pets and and individuals. Because you can wind up um, people can get ALS from it, Lou Gehrig's disease. It can kill you. I mean, it's that simple. Right. But, but it's there very have, dangerous. Yeah, but there are a couple. There's a pond in southern New Hampshire, and there was a woman that was there from that pond. And she, there's only 12 people on it on the lake or the pond, and she said they get blooms every year. And I said, do you feel like it's affected anyone's health? Because there are definite instances where they have tried to relate it to ALS or any kind of neuro disease. Mm -hmm. So. She said she wasn't aware of it. She, I feel like she had not been there very long. Mm. So, how can you recognize this stuff? It's um, well, cyano is is blue green. Blue green. <clears throat> but it it can it's just a, a greenish material that's in the on the surface of the water. It can be just below the surface of the water. They can be little balls that are floating in the water. Um, under yeah, the surface, like clouds like kind of right. blue clouds underneath the water. Mm -hmm. You can see it in Meredith, right yeah. at the end of Mill Falls in the high summer there. It, 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 or by Bear, Bear, Bear Island, they always have it between, like near Chef Brown's, because I used to see it there every summer. And do they specify what the primary cause of this stuff is? Over nutrients in the water, it's lots of extra fertilizers and stuff like that. Old septic I mean, si systems, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A combination of the, all. It feed, it's feeding that bacteria and letting it grow and people. It's it's ubiquitous. But I th it I think it could be there without people. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, it's so every, it's literally everywhere. It's because not just in, in our water. science class. They talk about how that was probably the start of our organisms on Earth. Mm -hmm. oh, was the bubbling mass, cyanobacteria. Really? Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad to hear you teaching it that way. I didn't teach it, but I was listening when they did. <laughs> okay. Anything else about Lakes Congress? I think it's always well worth it to go. Oh, yes. For you know, for our group to spend that money and for us to go is, I think it's always invaluable. I agree. Just the networking alone. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Okay, stormwater regulation. Is anything being done about the stormwater regs for the city? We've had some discussions with DPW. Um, 
they have some ideas of some things that they would like to implement to try to uh, ward off uh, MS4 designation as long as we possibly can, but we haven't got too far with it. Um, Shanna and Luke Powell had a draft that they had marked up. Is that, is that any of any value, do you think, in this, in this process, or is it, is it? Um, I'm not sure. I did look at that probably a year ago, but I really don't. I couldn't tell you. I, I'm not up to speed enough on it, I don't, so I don't know. So is, is anybody doing anything about it, or should we do something about it, or should we just sit back and wait for somebody else and then review it? I would... Um, I would wait till we get a, a, a replacement for Evan. Okay. And then make it one of that person's goals. Okay. To uh, work with DPW and, and to come up with something that's okay. concrete. Okay. Is this a severe problem in the city? It, it's an ongoing issue and um, The MS4 regulation is, is slowly but surely working its way up this way. I mean, I, I think Concord is under it, but I don't believe it's gotten much further north than that. Um, I mean, the days of, if you do a, a road construction project, the days of just, you know, digging a roadside ditch and putting the water and letting it go where it's going to go is, is over. You, you got you to gotta try to do some type of uh, treatment for it before it reaches some body of water. I mean, obviously all storm drain go to a body of water eventually, but it would be good to have some form of at least partial treatment, whether they're swales or rain gardens or detention ponds or, you know, what, whatever it happens to be. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it consumes more and more of municipals, not just Laconia, everybody's municipal budget as time goes on, you know. Where it was just a footnote 20 years ago, it's, it's a major expenditure now, so. You know, things like um, get those vacuum trucks to uh, suck out the storm drains, keep them clean so that they'll function better. Um, byproduct of that is you might have a few less mosquitoes, but primarily to keep them functioning well. To, uh, you know, most people think those the catch basins just catch the water and, and send it someplace, but the primary purpose of a catch basin, as you probably know, is to put the water in the, in the tank of the catch basin and, and let it infiltrate down into the ground as much as possible. So when they get covered up with leaves and road debris and everything else, then they, they stop doing that to, you know, an efficient manner. So you got, you got to clean them out every now and then. And one of the criteria is to do that more often. As, you know, instead of doing it every three or four years, you got to do it one or two years type thing. So that becomes expensive. Those trucks are a half a million dollar investment and oh, yeah. and they're they break down a lot <laughs> and then when you suck up that stuff what do you do with it you know you, you got to figure that stuff out too so uh, you know I mean we're not we're not static in the issue but you know we're we're just trying to do a little bit more every year I know Wes is very interested in you know pursuing different things that we can do to try to stave off EPA, but. Makes sense. Yeah. So what do we do with the debris that's removed? By I the have no idea. Depends on what it is, I think. <laughs> wow. Depends on what it is. <laughs> I don't know what we do. I don't, I don't know. It's not, my, if my memory is correctly, it's not 
I mean, it's it's it, there's a lot of sand and and stuff like that in it, but leaves. it's not suitable in leaves. It's really not suitable as fill or anything like that because it's got plastic and trash bags and in fast food wrappers and everything else and uh, walls. Yeah, oil, grease. Once it you know. be by my house, they would come and blow it out, and get all the kids' balls would come out. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I would, I would guess you have to either landfill it or put it someplace where it's gonna settle and and not, you know, run off into another storm drain. Yeah, exactly, or into a body of water, right? Sand pit. Sounds like some of it could be composted. To, to separate it out might be. Yeah, it may be too expensive, but an issue. Yeah. And then I, I don't know, I don't know how much you can separate out the oil and grease and whatever else. And then plastic mm -hmm. after a while starts to degrade; it becomes that shredded Japanese oil. knotweed seed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Can that stuff be incinerated, like you know, a lot of trash is? Uh, may, uh, maybe. I mean, I know they take some. Uh, when they redo some of these roads around here, they take the dirt someplace and have it incinerated because it's got stuff in it that. Mm. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know that that's a one hundred percent answer either. But maybe better than just. You know, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty ex expensive it too. It is expensive. Incinerate. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. I, d I never knew you could incinerate dirt until just like a year or so ago when Wes Anderson was talking about. I forget which road project they were doing, but the. They're going to have to dig out the old base of the road and take it and, and have it incinerated. I'm going. Yeah, but don't they just sterilize it essentially? Yeah, I guess I get. Yeah. But I mean, there's oil and there's grease and there's right, you and know it burns, and, it burns and, it up, and yeah. people right. used you know bad fill that had contaminants from the from the get go right. from you know 50 years ago. Then, I mean, when I was a kid, dirt roads got oiled every year so they right. keep the dust down. I mean, you know, it just it's that kind of stuff. You know, we don't do that anymore, but. <laughs> you know. used to pay good money to have it done. Yeah. I lived on a camp road. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So no that kind worries. of stuff. Yeah, the good old days, right, Mike? Right. <laughs> I had a client that had um, gasoline contaminated clay, and we looked at the cost of incinerating it as opposed to landfilling it. The problem was going to be what to do with all of the clay pots that we were going to make. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we didn't do that. Okay. All right. So we'll wait on the stormwater regs until. So you have an advertisement out for. We do not yet, but we will shortly. Okay. Okay. And do you have? Um, you probably went to your Ouija board to get this information, but do you have a forecast for? How long you think it'll take to get somebody? Um, generally, when we post it, I think they usually do a well. They usually do like a two-week window, but in this case, I guess we could do that. And if we, and depending upon the response we get, maybe we just post it again. I don't know, but I'm not anticipating this being filled super quick, really. But. Even with graduation right, right around the corner? But maybe we'll be surprised. Okay. You know, I think we we need the right person as opposed to a Just person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Tree regulation? Anybody know anything about that? Was it in regards to early bud? Well, uh, no. <laughs> So no, no. I, no, I, I, think, I, I think the tree regulation um, revolves around the man who wanted to remove a few trees, oh. yes. mark the trees he wanted to remove, and then clear cut the hill. Did we look? Did we look that back up? No. So Alfi, and I don't know the address, but right by Governor's Island entrance. The guy that was going to build a oh, garage mm -hmm. yeah. on the side. CUP. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's 575 Endicott Street. So when he first presented, when he the CUP for the for the driveway. Yep, because he was oh. re regrading the driveway oh. and moving it, I uh, think down the. Oh, the one that goes up the hill. They took yep. out the, all the pines and stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, oh yeah, no, I saw so her uh, came during to the us, day. He said, oh, we're just going to cut these two little trees. And then, like, the last time I went by, the whole hillside was... Yeah, I did the erosion control inspection on that, I think, last week, and the trees had been removed. And the brush, too, like, on the side. So oh, yeah. he's, yeah. And it's so steep. And uh, it's right down to the lake. Is he within the 250 there? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Good. Well, we can... We'll figure it out. Put DES on it. Yeah. But does it does the city have any regulation when it comes to cutting down trees where an applicant comes in and does exactly this? I need to remove three trees so I can build my garage and then cuts 35 trees down? Um, yes and no. Oh. Um, Depending upon uh, area, and I don't know what the cutoff is right off the top of my head, but I mean, if it's like less than a half an acre or something, I, and I don't know what the number is exactly, I, I don't know that there's a whole lot you can do. Um, you know, if somebody wants to expand their backyard or whatever, I, I don't think there's a whole lot you can do. Um, However, if they're on a steep slope, you know, 25% or more, then we certainly have regulations about that. And part of his land probably would be classified as steep slope. Mm -hmm. um, and primary thing that we would do there would be to say you got to leave the stumps in the right in the they haven't done anything on removal of stumps yeah so but I don't know what their plans are I mean you right. know, next weekend they bring in the the big machine the backhoe and you know I, I don't know you know I don't know but um, so does he get fined for taking that stuff down it, it or will not depend through, us, through the state or through the state because he's within yeah. the 250-foot yeah. shoreland for sure. Maybe not all of his property, but certainly the, the that area. That area is. Um, yeah, they can. Usually, they try to get uh, replanting, but I mean, replanting takes 20 years to right really recover. Not the same size but, trees. Um, it gets the message to. The neighbor, maybe. The yeah, the neighbors and, and, and the landowner that, you know, if he's thinking, well, maybe I've done that much, I might want to do those 10 trees over there, that maybe he won't do those 10 trees over there. You know, I don't know. But, all right, we'll, we'll, um, we'll, uh, we'll get on it. Can, can we tell him to cease and desist, don't, or whatever the terminology, proper terminology yeah, is. Yeah, we'll, we'll send don't him a letter. Don't do anything else Stumps. until the yeah. state contacts you yeah. regarding the 250, because yeah. the next thing he'll be doing is on the weekend, he'll have, he'll be out taking stumps out. Yeah, right. Which, which guy is, we, are we talking about? I'm a little bit confused. If you're coming did we from. we review this at any time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. If you. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. It's right garage. before Governor's Island. If you're coming from, say, Patrick's, and going, going up that way. Before Governor's Island. Right before yeah. the entrance to Governor's Island, on the left, it's very way steep up going up. The White House. And he had, he had a double garage at the bottom, but he wanted it attached. Was it for a handicapped person? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. But oh, yeah. he, he was going to have to cut into the top of his driveway because the driveway did go up to the house. Right. So he was going to cut that out oh. and fit in a garage there. This one we reviewed a couple months ago? Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay, I'm right. with it now. Yeah. It's the first or might be second, but property, when you when you cross the Guilford-Laconia line into, into Laconia, it's the first or second property on the left. You'll recognize them. It's got big stumps. You'll see the house very clearly now. Yeah, it's on the lake side, though. No, it's oh, across. It's on the other side. On the other side. So as you okay. come around that bend, you can see it yeah. from the lake. Right there. Yeah. 
Because remember, he wanted to like move the driveway a little yeah, so that he right, could have right. better visibility. Yeah. yeah. But so is that our response or like our, the city's responsibility to let DES know that? Or do they yeah. have people that come out and look? No, we'll, we'll, we'll let them know. Okay. Do they have inspectors that come around? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I, don't, I didn't know how often or. Yeah. I mean, they're, they'll take whatever information we get. You know, usually Evan used to send them like pictures and stuff. And okay. Thank you. Okay. Do we have the notes on what we said he could do somewhere? Uh, I'm sure Evan does, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, because it went to uh, the planning board. Yeah. Yep, he had to get a CUP. Yeah, I mean, that would be the reason you guys would have uh, reviewed right. it as, as a, to yeah. advise on the right. CUP. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, anything else on trees? Okay, under old business. Lake host training uh, in June, right? Yeah, we can do that sometime. <laughs> um, Our next meeting is the 19th. Right. do it I could do it on the 19th because I think we we're planning to start the lake coast at our ramp anyway on the 22nd sure and it's right then at the right time right and um, so we could start our meeting there and then come back yep. here like we did last time yep are you gonna be around Marty okay let's plan that okay that's good June 19th okay where is it gonna be at the um, Messer Street ramp what time? Uh, six six Or, six well, last time we met at 5.30. Okay, let's make it 5.30, and that way we have time to shift. What, 6 o'clock? I don't care. 5.30. Les probably can't make it, though, can he? I can train him another time. Yeah. Okay. He's trainable. All right, so. so There's a street lamp by ramp 5.30. June 19th. 19th. And hopefully by then we'll have the um, we'll have Lake Host for um, fish and game ramp over on Water Street. Hopefully we'll have them all. In yeah, place. really. Yeah. We can do one. Well, one train. They, that that'll be a different training. I'll have to work with them for the day or something. That'll be a little different. This is, I mean, for us as volunteers. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. All right, good. Okay, Pearly Pond. I have some updates for you. Full of water. <laughs> what? It's Ducks. full of water. Right. Full and of all water. the stuff is floating around that's been caught up in the weeds and whatever because the water's come up enough so it's moved them around. Okay. So, so, so as you know, the family that donated the land and pond to the city is not happy with how it's being maintained so they had a meeting uh, I'm not sure exactly when the meeting was a couple of few weeks ago anyway uh, family member to uh, city manager um, someone from Parks and Rec and uh, someone from uh, company she's from uh, Rift and Rift Rift Rush and White Rift Rush and White yeah yeah RFS um, and then they've had some follow-up conversations with DES um, the belief is that runoff and sedimentation from primarily the North Main Street uh, has run into the pond and is uh, it's the primary responsibility for the growth of the 
Adler is another brush that are right at the water's edge or, or in the water. And the question was asked of whether you could dredge just that section, just to the first two or three feet from the present shoreline uh, and kind of get rid of that buildup and some of that vegetation. And the answer from RFS engineer was the pond is out of the 250 foot shoreline, so we don't have to worry about that. However, the pond itself is a wetland, so therefore it, anything you do in the water obviously would require a permit from, from DES. And they've reached out to DES to find out uh, the possibility of that. In the initial uh, response, no surprise here from DES was, you probably shouldn't do that. This is maybe the natural ebb and flow and cycle of, of a pond and this is what ponds do over a period of time and so I don't think that's any surprise to any of us but I think it's a little bit of a surprise to mm -hmm. to some people um, so we're uh, we're going to continue to pursue the permit we may not uh, act on the permit but we're going to pursue the permit. Um, and we'll see what happens from that. Um, separately from that would be your efforts that I know that you guys have been working on in terms of some type of a landscaping plan or what could we do around the edges to to try to make the pond look better at the same time try to protect it and I think you should continue to do that I don't think that that is uh, contrary to these efforts <clears throat> and I mean the answer from DES may be a no anyway on the dredging of the pond I, I, I mean how would they know what the historic depth of it was? Did anybody well, do any bathymetric? No, see, it's not, it's not a question of the depth of the pond. It's a question, yeah, nobody knows how deep it is out in the middle or whatever. And, and nobody's talking about going out in the middle and doing anything. It's, it's really the first mm. two or three feet <clears throat> right at the edge to just, it's, it's basically where that. They want it tidied up. Yeah, the Adler's, I guess it's Adler's, I don't know, whatever, anyway, the brush is kind of growing up in the water and everything else. And, uh, which it's supposed to be. Yeah, which it's, it's supposed to, yeah, I, no, I, yeah, 100% understand. But now, for a small fee, I could export a beaver from my pond <laughs> <laughs> if they were able to fund a relocation project, so, I'd be um, willing to. So I did ask really the question. There. No, no, no. I did ask the question about the the outflow pipe and I don't believe the outflow pipe has been checked however the belief is that the, the pond is 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 shrinking not expanding so I don't think it's a matter of whether the pipe is clogged or not it's it's a matter of the, the belief is the, that the runoff in the sediments is is causing the the, the land to expand and the pond to to shrink that is the belief at this point in time whether that will turn out to be true or not I don't know but and that's the belief who, whose theory is that I believe that's the RFS's engineer that's for us somewhere yeah I mean it could be it's there's a national you know natural progression of filling yeah. in yeah. Right. And growing up. Which is what every pond does. <clears throat> yeah. Has yep. anybody thought of doing a, like a dye test, insert some dye right at the intake, and then go down to the lake and see where it comes out? I, I don't know what. I don't think they're concerned about the outfall pipe, but. The outfall into the 
So where does it outfall? Into the lake? I believe it. I believe it might come out right at Opeachy Cove. Yeah, I don't. No? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, DPW knows where the pipe goes, right? Maybe. Maybe. So the pipe, the pipe is the pipe is in the pond, goes under the road and down along the road on the left side. Left left or right side, depending on which way you're Lakeside, probably, right? On the lakeside, yeah. It goes down there, and then where it goes. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I would think that if, if, if I look at the pond today, the pond is expanding. The pond is, you know, because we've gotten so much rain, it's spread out. It's, it's high. I don't yeah. know yeah. if it's expanded, but it is well, high. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, you know, it, you can see it from the road, which is what the, the family had wanted. I'm afraid, I'm just afraid that, that the family may not be happy unless it's mowed oh. down to the edge and pretty little flowers are there. Manicured. Right. right. That's, that's what I'm afraid of because we did cut, the, you know, or the city cut brush down. And like I said, it's very visible now. They were complaining that it wasn't visible. Right, and uh, yes, last fall, they, 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 in winter, they took the uh, the brushes down. Right, to well, it looks really pretty ugly up. though, with the stump sticking up like that, three feet or four. Well, they're starting to sprout now, so yeah, they'll they'll fill in. So they'll fill in, and we'll have to cut them again. Yeah, and I would I would think, and and you know, there was uh, <laughs> my forecast was poo pooed that if. If we take the vegetation from along the edge of the road away, that the road will be undermined, could be undermined mm -hmm. by erosion, and wind up in the pond anyway. So if we were going to do anything, I would think that what we would do is we would put some sort of a retaining wall. Now, it doesn't have to be real tall, just a retaining wall along the edge of the road so that, you know, and then put a pipe that collects it that has it go someplace else. Oh, Don't my know. goodness. They'd have to fund the engineering and everything like that. Just a pond with a big old tree. I, I submit to Beaver one more time. <laughs> <laughs> They're very you just want to get rid of them. <laughs> I wonder when that pipe was put in, the drain pipe, how many years ago? Oh. A long time ago. I'm sh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's almost... I don't, they, nobody seems to know where it goes. Everybody says DPW knows, but we never heard anything from them about where it goes. But I almost want to bet that they did it the easy way. They ran it right into a storm drain back then. Well, it does. It goes into the storm drain that's on the lake side of um, whatever it is, Parade Road or yeah. North Main Street, whatever it's called there. It goes and into the drain then. It goes. It goes. In, it goes from the 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 pond. The, the the drain is underwater, so you can't even see where it is. Yeah. The the, but there is a, and it goes under the road, and then. So it's not one long pipe into the lake, then. Okay. No. Well, I don't know. No, it have to go. It has to go into something. Otherwise, you have to go across multiple right. properties, and there's yeah. none of that out there. Uh, it it seems to me that we're. We're 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 missing a, um, a lot of information here. Like, is the pipe that drains the pond clogged? Partially clogged. Is there enough debris that's you know backed up against it? If it's never been cleaned out, I mean it's it's got to be. I, 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 I would. And so you know I. I myself have been moved to go over there with a rake, so I thought it would be yeah, I, prudent. I, 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 I would. I mean, that might, instead of having to go through all the dredging process, if that were. Well. I will put forth the idea. Okay, so I, I guess the, the, the question I have is. You know, the, the, when we had the meeting about this, the city council had the meeting, and uh, Councillor Cheney presented this, this email from 
the Pearly family saying that they were not happy with the way we were maintaining it, the City Council asked the Conservation Commission to come up with a solution. So now we have, we have what we've been doing and then we have, you know, other people that are doing stuff that we don't even know about and we're not even notified about. And so it's frustrating to me um, to be asked to do something and, and we're going along doing things and all of a sudden things are happening and we're not even being told about it. So either they want us involved or they don't want us involved. Um, you know, and I don't, frankly, there are people that are making decisions here that I'm not sure that they're as qualified to make the decisions as people in this commission are. So, um, you know, to, so, you know, the, the one question I have is, and since we're getting ready to do the capital improvement plan, how much money does the city have to throw at this pond when we, you know, we do it now, right? That's what I thought, maybe not even that much. You know, th that we do, we do this in 2019, and then in five years we do it again. So it's, you know, let's solve the problem, not just, okay, let's go in and we'll rip out the vegetation and we'll take away the sediment that has accumulated in the pond and then everything will be in five years right back to where it is now. Okay. So, so rather than, I, I mean, I was really shocked to hear that there was a, a possibility of dredging the pond. Now dredging the pond is not what, I, what you described. My was to go in there and we don't even know how deep the pond is. We don't even know where and the water need, comes from or the pond. How we know many it's, it's in there from the tree. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. And so we're fighting Mother Nature and we are going to lose. Or we're going to spend a lot of money. Right. I will relay your concerns and desires. And I don't believe anything has been decided. The information I have today is nothing's been decided. We're, they're doing some what ifs and what could happen type things, and we'll, we'll see what happens out of that. And if you judge I a will, bond, it's not going to save the tree. Well, and that was no, and that's a that is a separate issue. You know, the, they're um, um, the arborists that they have ha consulted are have recommended two things. One is it's probably a lost cause, but if you're going to do something, you got to take drastic action and do a major, 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 pruning. major pruning, and it won't look anything like it does now when they're exactly. done, and it may not have any effect. Remember the old man on the mountain. I, I do remember it. It's on every single license plate. <laughs> yeah, you, no, you're right. At some point in time, it's a tree. You know, it, it, that's, 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 and I know, you know, I, I realize it's a champion tree and, and, you know, there's all that that goes with it. But at some point in time, you're right. But whether it saves it for five years or whether it saves it for ten years, Nobody knows, and stay tuned. But it's, you know, the idea of putting braces and all that stuff under various things is not going to fly. So no. It's, no, it's the recommendation is do a major, major trim on it, and see what happens. But there's no confidence in that. And, oh, I, and who's going to make that decision? And who's going to pay for that? <laughs> and who's going to pay for that? Uh, that would be out of Parks and Rec's Parks and Rec is, is responsible for the maintenance. Yeah, facilities all right, facilities all right, budget. All right. I mean, they've got a budget for maintenance of city property, and, you know, I mean, it's not unlimited, and obviously you, if you spend $3,000 on an arborist and a, and a, tr a crane of some kind to, you know, support those branches while you're cutting them and all that stuff, then that's $3,000 or whatever it is that you're not spending on other things in the city that 
are just as Then you go chop easy. it down later. And, and uh -huh. yeah, you know, it's kind of like the Indian. I mean, how, how long do you go to save something and then... That could have been preserved years ago, but it wasn't. Right. But at some point in time, it is what it is. So, I don't know. I think I think that one is uh, is out of our hands. It's but they, the, the, the the oak, the pearly oak. Uh, I, I think the Indian. well, I you know, the, <laughs> I, I guess the, the the one thing that you know, aside from the frustration that I've already voiced, um, if they come up with a dredge and fill permit application, this commission needs to review it. So. Yep. We would be better, if you know, better positioned for a thorough uh, review if we were involved in the process. Yep. Can so. we review our own process, or is there a <coughs> conflict? It's not our process. It, yeah. Well, if we're going to review it and we're involved in the process to start with, but we we, would we have a conflict of interest as a reviewer. I think we can, and because what happens is we review it, and then it, and we give comments, and it goes to the state, and we can clearly state that you know, the, the, if this is the case, that the commission was responsible for participating in the preparation of this dredge and fill application. So we have I'm pretty careful on that one, right? So anyway, okay, enough about that. Um, yeah, one of the things that could be helpful in terms of the appearance of that um, pond is to have trash picked up on a regular basis, whatever that means. Yeah. Um, so well, that would be okay. When was that the question? You know, probably was never asked of the arborist. I would be curious what they would say about if dredging that pond would have any effect on the tree. I don't know that, I don't know that the arborist, I wasn't there when, when the arborist yeah, was But there. I mean, we've had arborists there too right. that are familiar with it. Just a general question, you know. I think, um, Amy Levisic told us the name of the, the arborist that was there, O'Keefe, Corey, Corey, O'Keefe, Corey Keefe, Keefe, whatever. I don't know. So I, you know, Amy would be the one to ask that question. And I talked to Amy yesterday, and she was going to send me a copy of the email that, you know, talked about dredging and et cetera. Yeah, I got, I got it here for you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so now we have all these other issues of, of the pond clean out and trash pickup, um, drain cleaning, tree trimming, parking easement at the Bean Conference Center, and then a planting plan. Have we approached the beans regarding that? Or? I have not. I don't know no, if anybody has. Or if that's something the city wants. Hmm? What'd you say? Or if that is something the city even wants. The city may not I want know that. we discussed it. Right. I thought somebody was going to approach the beans. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. I don't think we want to encourage. Too much activity around the pond. I agree with you on that one hundred percent. Less tree. is best. Yeah. For I, everybody and everything. I think that's the going to be the attitude of the city. Okay. Well, one thing we got to keep people away from the, the pearly tree. oak anyway, because it's even if you trim it, it's still not, you know. Well, and there was a, a windstorm when a couple of pretty good sized branches blew down. Right, right. Yep, right. So I, I, I think it's one of those areas where you just you just let it be, and in terms of parking, parking, and all, you know, whatever it is, what it is now, and we'll do our best to make the pond vibrant, but. Couple swans, maybe? Couple swans. And a beaver. To the Edwards? <laughs> 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 I think the main 
flamingos. Traffic jam. Go. Pink flamingos, <laughs> yes. Plastic pink I flamingos. I saw that movie. I've got a half a dozen if you need them. <laughs> <laughs> and what do they eat? <laughs> Anything you want to feed them. <laughs> Plastic. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so we... It, so I would say continue to work on a planting plan and kind of figure out what you think might be best for that because I don't think that that is contrary to the other efforts. Right. Okay. All right. That's what we will do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So do we want to review these? Can I uh, inject before we sure. get into that I'm sorry. stuff? I just got a question. Uh, biosolids. Gilmanton is in a big flim flam about biosolids. Yep. They passed an ordinance against it, but some of the farmers got grandfathered into it. I know I'm not going to buy any corn or vegetables from Gilmanton in any farmer's market. And uh, do we in Laconia have any kind of regulation regarding spreading biosolids? And if not, why not? I don't know, but I will find out for you. Didn't we use biosolids on some of the athletic fields a few years ago? Probably, I think so. Yeah. I think we did. And I think there was of course they I think there was a complaint of the odor associated. Yeah, and with they it. drain somewhere in all these athletic fields. I don't know if it was biosolids. Seem to me I, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I feel like Gilmington is the only place around here that has agreed to use that that, well, that it's allowed. Farmers. I don't think I mean I mean the fields I know are the fields by Opeachy there where our school is, mm -hmm. they have used like a natural fertilizer, but it wouldn't have been a biosolid because the lake is right there. Maybe there's sheep in there or something. That stinks. Okay, so, but that's a different question. The, di the question was, does the city have a Yeah, does the city have, or is the city looking into prohibiting this stuff? I think we should, personally. Yeah. Uh, it needs to be looked at before yep. somebody decides to use it, and then they get grandfathered in when we finally do something. All right, I will look into it. Good, okay, thank you. Okay, anything else on the Pearly Pond? No, but I have somewhere if you could insert me before we get into the DES application. Okay. Go right and I want to follow up on this kind of follow up, and I just didn't know where to put it. Okay, go ahead. Before you go, it's okay. What's that? It's okay. Go. 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 So I happened to see Paul, the GIS person from. Uh, Public works down on the roller coaster road, and I pulled in and talked to him. And one of the things that I have the ability to walk some of these and can train the next person, but it'd be nice on the GPS unit that Evan had purchased if there's any interfacing on the um, on the um, on the formats to be able to put on it like you could see on your phone sometimes but it'd be nice to have this in something we own it is be able to be able to walk the uh, points of the protected lands we have so there's a possibility i don't know what unit this is it's down there in the office yeah it'd be nice to put that on and inclusive as two other gps points which would be the deep water testing out on uh, out on Lake on Pogus Bay. Those actually have Latin long coordinates, and to be able to punch those in would allow us to go right to these things. I still have enough memory of doing this with Scott that I can teach this to someone else if it's made easier. We can always, by going out and walking it, confirm and update the points of these. Yep, okay. So, like you know overlay I mean. the easements on that? Right, so I'm looking to get easements, some of the other stuff we use, either whether it's the points we do the water testing at. Or the treatment. Or, right, and the uh, deep water testing on Pogus. 
then you could just take the boat and the unit and go right to it and say, ah, that's where we're at every time. Instead yeah. of looking at the hill like, oh, yeah, exactly. Right you, you know, you can never tell. So, all right, and then also the uh, the boundaries of of uh, protected areas we protected have. Areas. So when we go out and do this uh, walk on. Uh, um, Pickle Pond, right. and Dick says, you know, is this here? We should be able at least to walk to it. And when you get there and you can see the pin, okay. click it and update it, see if you can make it more accurate. All right. But it'd make it a lot easier because I've already been out in the woods. I put it on one of my GPS units, but I broke the unit, so I don't have that information anymore. I thought that was in here and it was a shape file. Yes. Isn't that in the minutes here somewhere? Yes, because yes, we talked about it last. Right. 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 I'm just, so I'm just beating the drum on that again because I can right. yeah. still do yeah. this stuff yeah. and I'm willing to participate to Good. transfer some institutional knowledge. Okay. That's what we need. I think I think the data is there. It's just a matter of accessing it and, and, and storing it. it. Yep. 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 And I understand that. Okay. It's just if we own the unit. We might as well be utilizing it. I'd love, if I, you know, if I can borrow it, I'll take it for a walk and do some of the stuff around my spot. I got one other question. Any response to the letter we sent regarding the easement on Shore Drive? Not yet, no. No response yet. Okay, the um, Messer Street Porto Sand Porta Potty. It's been taken care of. I, but it, has it been? I know one put there. <laughs> it was. I don't know where it was yesterday, but it's it's where it should be now. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. They moved it across the parking lot. It had been right next to the water. Right. So. Yeah, when I went by last night, I couldn't see it. So I. I, I don't know. Maybe they took that one and brought a new one. Yeah. But they put it on this side of the parking lot so that I mean was, I just did the quick over the shoulder it's, look while I, I was driving by and I, I said I, did, I didn't see I did too, so I pulled in there today and I'm like wait here it is I mean, you have to but, go pretty slow by there now because there's the roads torn up so you know right. you gotta you know right. <laughs> it was your time to sightsee yeah. so right now it's 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 on the edge of, it's really kind of in the parking lot because I think they're waiting for the grass to finish growing in yeah. and then maybe they could move it off a little bit only because on the weekends, that gets parked yep. by boats, okay. boat trailers. So it looks, no, it's good. Okay, and, and who who's responsible for that? Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec, okay. 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 So we have this application for, yeah, okay, anybody have anything else before we do the application? No, I don't. Okay. Okay, so 231 Weirs Boulevard. Is this a, a primary residence or a business? So an attorney determined that. It is a little sliver of land between Weirs Boulevard and the lake. And I'm not 100% sure in this one, but a lot of those little slivers of land are. It's the condo unit. On the it's other the side. condo unit across, in this case, it's the condo unit. But they're usually co-owned, and they in the lot numbers are lots are usually uh, associated with one another. So it's a um, some sort so of an a, association. It's a common area for an association, yeah. Oh, you can't. I mean, you can. They got a. I don't think they've got any structure at all on it. And it's acceptable for the condo association for this to go through? I guess they do have a little. You mean is it part of the condo documents? Right. Sometimes condo. Well, in this case, it's a, repl it's, it's a replacement, so. Oh, good. It doesn't mention anything about a condo here. It just says this uh, Keith, uh, Norman Keith, the owner. But he if you see that picture... You can see there's several mm -hmm. condos across the street. Yeah. There's, I think most of those stairways down in Little Box have several users yeah. in that area. Yeah. Do they, 
Does it say in here what they plan to use for materials? Pressure treated. Is that what it says? Oh. oh. It says no idea. Pylons. It doesn't say what the material is that they're made for, out of. But for the stairs, I mean, I would just suggest that they use, you know, some kind of treks or something because they're going to end up with the same yeah, situation the because it's it's fiberglass. set in the ground. Yeah. It doesn't have. Yeah, I think in, in in this day and age, most people are n are not using pressure treated can't anyway. treads and decking, and right. most people have gone to the composites. Well, that maybe ought to be something we make a note of then. And replace all. Uh, well, those were in tough shape. A lot of splinters there. Okay, so do you want to put a comment in that you? would like to see um, as much of the material as possible to be composite material instead of pressure treated. I think that's a reasonable. I think it's a good suggestion. Yeah, I yeah. think, it, I think for it's for them. It's a benefit for that. Right. Longevity. Okay, I can see, looks like they got some boat docks there too. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure that that's, isn't that the purpose of this is? is yeah, it's to get down to the water and yeah. And get on your boat. Get on the boat, yeah. I mean, so th this is basically a replace what's there. Right. Uh, Stabilize that dock. Yep. Looks like these docks are just going to be shoved out into the water. And it says they're going to do the steps themselves. So. Uh, it, it looks like a homeowner special to me. Yeah. I just... Unless they start pouring cement for, you know. Yeah, there's no de no details in this application, so I don't know. Right. Sounds reasonable, like they're replacing what they've had there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Maintenance, you know, you repair, and replacement of existing tidal docking structure. Well, that guy's the got addition, one thick fish line, I tell you. The addition of pylons, is that a normal thing? You would imagine, especially down along mm -hmm. there, get some air from the winter and everything like that, sure. Okay. So they're not going to have any um, protection from ice flow, the way that this is designed. I, I, don't, I don't know if they have a circulator or, or what they I, do. Certainly up to them. Yeah. Okay, so Island Services will be installing the pylon. They'll probably drive them. Yeah. That's what it says, yeah. Okay, so, you know, the, there's no place for comments. Oh, Rob has all the comments. Those are all the original packets right there in, in those, in those uh, envelopes. Oh, okay. Well, we still don't, it, on the application, there's no place to put comments. It's just a sign, sign off, and that's it. There's no, so what we've done in the past, and this was um, Scott McPhee would attach a, um, a letter to it saying, Recommendation is to use pressure treated, not use pressure treated, whatever whatever our recommendation was. Is that on a letter just uh, drafted from the conservation to the app to? Uh, it, he had a form, and I think that Evan looked for the form and couldn't find it. He talked to Scott, and between the two of them, Evan couldn't find it. It was a it was just a form that said City of Laconia, you know planning department and it said you know we approve it we don't approve it um, and any suggestions it was just the you know handwritten suggestions and then I would sign it or he would sign it one of them 
So it wasn't like a real complicated, you know, type up a letter kind of thing. It was. I'm sure we can draft that up. We can come up with something that works. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure. And if you want to put a condition on that, we can include that in the letter too. And I, and I think the, the condition is to use, um, not use pressure treated and and I think what we would like to know is, um, before we could sign off on it, what are the pylons made out of? I mean, they could be steel. They no, they're not going to be steel. They're going to be wood, southern yellow pine treated, like pressure treated. Like pressure treated. Okay. That's what you're seeing used out there. Yeah, do you have new formulas? Yeah, it's not. It? It's not the same. It's not arsenic. It's, it's not. Right, it's not arsenic and no. That's good. Cadmium and what it's was kind it? Of our drinking a water. AC, I mean, some, ACA some, or something? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. They okay. use a different formula now. Twenty years from now, they'll tell us how bad that is too. But right. for the time being, <laughs> but for now, that's what we're using. <laughs> that's that's what we're doing. Um, I'll make a motion that we um, sign off on this repair work along with our suggestions, to include our suggestions. Okay. okay. I'll second that. Okay. Any additional comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right. So I'll sign these and give them to Rob and then. Okay. How big is this dock on Court Street? Oh, this already exists? I think it already exists. I think this is a replacement yeah. too, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Repair, replace, replace, and kick out. Looks like a needed upgrade. It's all the same and size. This is uh, at DuPont uh, property? Yep. Okay. Most of the same. Okay, so now, in, in terms of 231 Weirs Boulevard, when we approve these applications, does anybody from the city go to make sure that they're doing what? No, we just send it. We just send the form down. So. But nobody goes to check. Oh, you mean when they do oh. the actual work? Well, Evan used to, right? Yeah, I, I think he. Yeah, I think he goes and. Okay. It was part okay. of his construction. So who who is a designated inspector? Haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> okay. Rob has been doing the uh, construction sites for uh, soil erosion. But oh, okay. Good. Good. So you picked the busiest time of might, year to leave. <laughs> might, uh, I've got an email drafted to send to you to ask some questions. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. We might. Uh, I'll study tonight. Get ready for your quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Although, uh, yeah, and, uh, and our other zoning technician, uh, Karen Santoro, has some experience in uh, erosion control and okay. inspections and those Good. kinds of things as well. Good. So okay. We're not, we're not completely flying blind here. Not bereft of talent. Right. Okay, so what are we looking at now? Well, 
looking at? Which one are you looking at? Court Street, but I'm trying to find. Court Street. What do they want to do? Just re repair. It's a re it's a re it's repair and replace. Oh, this is the. Is this the Judge and Phil? No. 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 It's three, the three eleven court. Repair existing dock, but it doesn't describe. Good size it to dock. You. Three eleven. Okay, that's not that one. Pendleton Beach, right? So they're not. Court Street first. Court Street first. Three eleven Court Street. So the gentleman owns property on both sides of the railroad track. This is the lakeside prop side of the property. Already has a, a dock on it. He just wants to replace and repair. Repair and replace. Sorry. So no change in the size. Oh, this is Martell's? No. DuPont. This well, is DuPont. But Brenda Martell's re representing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a DuPont Trust, Brenda Martell. Okay. Yeah. I'm not seeing any red flags here. The old dock looks in pretty sad shape. <laughs> At least we're getting good photographs on these. Yeah, we are. Absolutely. The lake is pretty high. Yep, they've all been high. Got no place to put it. Anybody have any comments? No, move to accept. Second. Okay. Any any comments? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. All right, Simon. And the next one is Pendleton Road. If you want, if you uh, look at the the aerial photograph picture, this one right here, right in the top center part, there's a there's a tennis court. There's a beach and then a tennis court. Mm -hmm. What they want to do is 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 tear out the tennis court because nobody's using it. They want to replace some of it with a uh, sand. A volleyball court, um, some other recreational aspect, and then a small pavilion. Yeah. Nobody's using them, really. It's terrible. They're lazy. <laughs> I used to think that would Get be a that nice. Get that on your video game, anyway. I used anyways. to think that would you be a nice neighborhood to, to be living, Devin. So, uh, in our conversations yeah. with the applicant, he's he's he believes there'll be less. Um, impervious surface when they're done than what they have now. Is this just to replace the tennis court? Yeah, this that's, thing? that's the only area that they're working that they're working in. The beach and the parking area and it stays exactly the way it is. It's just just the uh, tennis what, court area. That's not what the project says. Am I on the wrong one? Remove six feet of existing composite decking. Access pile below dock? No, I don't think so. Is that a different project? That's one. Where is it? 133 Pendleton? Yep. Yeah, it's a combination. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe they're going to do that too. I don't know. Yeah, Remove approximately are. six feet of existing composite decking to access the pile below the dock. Remove and replace or reset wood pile in approximately six feet of water. And then reinstall new composite decking. All right, so maybe this application is just for the dock then. Maybe he hasn't gotten to the... Uh, the tennis court. 
He'd be a tennis court player one, yeah. in. <laughs> I know he was just in the other day. He was just in, right. Tennis courts. So my, my apologies. That's right. I'm trying to get up to speed here. So just on the dock, this one's really just yep. looking at the dock. They're looking yep. at the... So again, if they've got uh, a pair of existing... That's what they've got checked off, so... That's reasonable to me. Approximately six feet of water. We install a new deposit deck. Those are kind of artsy. Okay. So the other comment I made is a little preview. At some point in time, you'll have a <laughs> we'll have a stay, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> Around the corner. <laughs> well, we already have our picture of it, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so anybody have any comments? No. So they're only going to do six feet of decking. That's what it says here. Remove. Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to remove in the decking to get access to the pile below. Right, then replace. And then they're going to replace the pile. And then they're going to put the decking back. Okay. So anybody want to make a motion? Make a motion to accept. Second. Okay. Any comments? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Wait, this doesn't include the tennis court, does no. it? No. 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 Just the no. deck. Because what's the whole thing with the building photo? Perspective for that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's the tax card. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Thank you for putting the packet together. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. nice. I didn't know exactly how your packets were usually put together, but I. We're easy. I winged it. <laughs> And a fine job you did. I guess he's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I don't think they're, gonna, they're not going to let us keep him very long, I don't think. <laughs> On a second job. One's enough. Okay. Especially after today. So do we have anything else on the agenda? Where's the agenda? Does anyone have anything else? Anything else? We sort of did the staff uh -huh. first. Marnie, do you have anything? No. Okay. I just have one thing. Um, I was over in Maine, and um, Ace Hardware has this program where um, when you go to buy paint, um, you pay some small amount more, like 35 cents a gallon. So if you bought a gallon of paint, you pay an additional 35 cents. And they will recycle the paint, and they take, they take um, the oil-based paint is used as a fuel, and the latex paint is all put together, and they make a color. <laughs> It, it goes it goes to a facility where they do this and they make a color and it's used by I think it may be used by like Habitat for Humanity for painting the exterior of or interior of their houses. This is some sort of gray. <laughs> I, I don't know. It depends on what we get. <laughs> you know, I mean, like if you want this. But, but, um, can we check and see if uh, I'll call Ace and see if um, if they do this here, um, because I thought it was a pretty good program. So if you have a lot of, you can only take, I think, five gallons at a time, but if you have a lot of paint, you, move, you know, you move into your house and you got a lot of paint that the previous owner left and you're not gonna use it, you can 
take it and they'll dispose of it for you. So we don't put it in the garbage. You're not supposed to anyway. Well, y you can take latex paint and you can dry it out. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. then you can put it in the garbage. Right. What if you got a whole can of this stuff? Yeah. I can ask um, the gentleman I work with at Metaglyph, Donnie Lamontal, she's a painter. He has a painting company. Okay. And I can ask him. What he does with his extra? The, the, yeah, and ask him about those programs. Yeah, because I thought it was, you know, it was a good way to get rid of the material and not have it go into the, yeah. My, my son lives in Chicago, and he had like 20 gallons of um, oil-based paint, and they told him to mix it with kitty litter, and when it got dried out, to put it in the garbage. All right. Last time I was at the recycling uh, thing that they have periodically in the county area, the woman that you know, was there uh, asked a survey or something about, are you in favor of ha having latex paints recycled? And obviously I said yes, because that's all I got, is latex paints that I need to get rid of. And uh, you know, some of them are full of gallons. Uh, you know, what do you do? And I haven't heard any more about that. And is that something the city's pursuing? I, I don't. I don't know. It's actually the Lakes Region Planning Commission that is right. uh, that spearheads a lot of that uh, hazardous waste recycle day. Um, I can reach out and I can see if I can get a contact information for what their plans are to, uh, with the latex. I think the question is uh, something like, would you would be willing to pay extra if we recycled latex? And I said, sure. Well, I, I think all that money for the hazardous waste actually comes from a grant money that they obtain annually. Exactly, yeah. Um, so there, there's there's little uh, monies that we put forward for that. But like, I can reach out and ask. Most paints these days are some form of latex rather than oil, you know, that you use around your house. So I'm sure there's a lot of latex paint out there that needs to be something done with. Yeah, I can, re I can definitely reach out to them. Dave Jeffers is the man to talk to. Dave Jeffers? Jeffers. Jeffers. J-E-F-F-E-R-S. And it's it's going to be, the date is going to be coming up soon. You'll be notified. Okay. Anything else? Motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Don't Thank forget, meet much. us at the dock next time at the ramp. Okay, so is Rob going to be the contact for setting up the agenda? Yep. <laughs> <Wow>. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> is there anything else we can give? <laughs>